Hi, my name is Josh Klon. I'm 14 years old. I go to Grand Bay and I have Asperger's. Some of the things I like to do uh, would be uh, play video games, play my guitar, maybe uh, just sit down in my room and think. I just like to think about my day, what am I going to do next, what's going to go on tomorrow, all that. Uh, I think one of the talents that I think others don't really have is that if I watch a movie or a TV show, I can memorize the lines instantly and impersonate them. I get up, eat breakfast, and put on a movie. <laughs> one of my favorite movies, um, I guess it would have to be The Cable Guy. I mean, I just love Jim Carrey and what he does. I think he's really funny. Okay. Well, maybe I shouldn't have come at all. Jerk off! I'm just joking. <laughs> Wake up, snoozy. Smell, smell, so. Uh, I'm pretty good at Family Guy. I, the, I've, I've heard that I'm pretty good at Lois and uh, Stewie impersonations. Okay. Oh, Mother, I come bearing a gift. I'll give you a hint. It's in my diaper, but it's not a toaster. Uh, the way I like my school, Grand Bay, is there are a lot of friendly people there. I do have some friends there. I think it's a pretty good place. I, I feel different. Uh, I feel different on the uh, other kids there because, I don't know, it's, you just get that feeling where uh, when you're like in a conversation with someone or a group of people and, uh, and you start talking about something, but then along the way you just get that weird feeling that uh, maybe I shouldn't be in this conversation. I'll just walk away. That and sometimes I just don't really feel like I belong anywhere. <laughs> um, I have made a lot of friends at Grand Bay. It's just that I don't really see them a lot. <laughs> I sometimes get the feelings that yes, I do feel left out, but it, it doesn't really bother me. I mean, I mean I've had those feelings since kindergarten, so I guess I guess I'm kind of used to it now, so to speak. My favorite subject in school, I'd have to say, it's kind of tied between health and math, because in math I'm pretty good at it, and in health my teacher, Mr. McLean, is just really funny. I wouldn't say I struggle more than other kids in school. I mean. I mean, in math, I, I'm pretty good at it, but yeah, there are some places where, yeah, I think I'm, I'm, I'm pretty slow at. <laughs> well, uh, the kids that I've met that have Asperger's, um, from what I've seen, they usually tend to be very um, sensitive, like. Uh, like, uh, sometimes they'll take stuff very seriously, like, for instance, um, if, like, uh, this one time, me and this other kid, um, I can't remember his name, but it was at my old school, uh, we were telling each other jokes, and, uh, I said this one, and, uh, we were telling jokes, and we kind of got into a, a big yo mama battle, <laughs> and so he threw the first joke at me, and then I threw another joke at him, and he freaked out and said, No, oh, man, you can't be talking about my mom like that. Hey, man, it's just a joke. So, yeah, some, so, yeah, some people with Asperger's tend to take things very seriously, even though some people are taking it as a joke. I don't usually care about the way I'm treated, as long as it's not in a bad way, but... Usually I've tried to just be normal. That's what people are basically telling me. So I don't really inform people that I have Asperger's because, uh, believe me, I've, I've tried that a lot and it never really worked out. So I just tried my best to be normal and didn't really like inform any of my friends so that they didn't have to worry. I don't really mind being treated the way I am now. I think I'm pretty good right now, but but yeah, in some cases, I guess there would be times where yes, 
you should be informed if someone has up, has Asperger's. What it means to me um, when someone has Asperger's syndrome, uh, the best definition, as I understand it, would be um, uh, social. Uh, it's a social absent-mindedness because uh, you know what tells me is is okay to do in a group of people, um, a child or a person with Asperger's syndrome would have no idea what's appropriate, what's good, what's bad. So, Well, I would describe Josh, number one, as he is very compliant, but he is also, um, I guess you would call a loner, and he prefers it that way. He's really good with groups of people when he has to be with groups but um, after about 20 minutes he's had it and you know he just finds a little corner and be by himself and he's been like that ever since he was in preschool um, you know uh, uh, Josh is he makes up for what he lacks in so many other ways it's hard to even begin I you know, when I was, uh, when he was just a, a little kid, maybe two or three years old, uh, we would go to yard sales and thrift stores and things and just looking for old toys and stuff. And he would find, you know, a bag of robot parts and on one shelf, go to another shelf and find another bag of parts and go to another shelf and find a, another bag of parts. And then, you know, and we'll buy all three bags and then we get home and he opens all the bags and he puts a whole robot together from all three bags. I'm like, how did you do that? Well, it looked like they all belong together. So that's what we did. We would go to thrift store. He'll see a part here, part there, part there. And somehow in his head, he can put the stupid thing together and he does. And it's like a whole robot, really? You know, you just put together a $40 robot that cost us $3. Yep. Um, Asperger's syndrome is uh, part of the au family of autism. You know, eventually Asperger's syndrome is, they're going to get rid of it altogether. Not the, not the disorder, just the name. So that they're just going to classify it as autism. But, uh, you know, I, Josh was, was born with it. There really isn't anything that I can do to um, cure it or get rid of it. Talking with uh, different child psychologists confirmed what I learned on the internet. And everything is, um, everything we do is all about behavior modification. And so ever since Josh was in, um, it was in first grade when they suspected that there was something going on with him, but by the time he was in third grade, uh, that's when we began behavior modification then, and everything was practice, practice, practice. And when I say practice, I mean before we leave the house, we practice at home. Okay, when you get to school, what are you going to do? When you get to school, what are you going to say? When you sit in the classroom and you have a question, what do you do? Everything in their life has to be structured. If you just if you let an Asperger's syndrome kid go to school without any instructions, they're just absolutely lost. Just absolutely lost. They would have no clue what to do or where to start or how to begin. Nothing. They just don't know how to behave. So a, a parent who can recognize the Asperger's syndrome in their child or if they know for sure that the child has Asperger's that's the best thing that they can do is um, <clears throat> Make sure the more the child knows of what to do and how to act and what to say, the more comfortable they are. Because when they don't know any of those things, it causes them a lot of high anxiety, they're nervous, they're scared, they have no self-esteem, no confidence. There are a lot of uh, characteristics to Asperger kids. And the ones that I've learned and become familiar with, they're sensitive to bright lights, uh, loud noises, they're very easily distracted. Um, <clears throat> they do not like change. I mean, the less change, the better. 
and um, and once again they just they prefer their own company they don't like to be around too many people and they like their they like their peace and quiet but also um, one of the bigger things that um, is a characteristic of an Asperger kid is they're very vulnerable to depression severe loneliness so